All right, it's that time of the year where the Miami Dolphins from the 1970s actually get to celebrate with some champagne as both the Philadelphia Eagles and the 49ers went down earlier today in both pretty disgusting ways. I've got all of that plus some additional thoughts about week. Uh, what week are we in? Week number six of your National Football League. You have tuned in to the House of Takes pod. I'm Dave DeVos. Thanks so much for tuning in. It is just in front of 11 p.m. PST on a Sunday night. Let's dive into it. All right, let's start with the San Francisco 49ers. All right, to be fair, they lost Debo early in the game. They lost McCaffrey a little bit later. They were playing um, uh, without, uh, you know, some of their superstars. Brock Purdy couldn't get past 85 yards passing until 55 minutes of the game had passed. It was not a good offensive performance by the San Francisco 49ers. Or was it just that the Dallas Cowboy defense is not in the same league as the Cleveland Browns defense, which is really what I think it is? Look, this Cleveland Browns defense at this point, as painful as this is for me to say, is historic. They are one of three teams, like literally since like the 1970s, early 1970s, to allow less than 1,100 yards during their first five games of the season. Just absolutely a fantastic defensive performance. Let's just call it what it is. This was a fantastic defensive performance by the Cleveland Browns. And it also showed Kyle Shanahan, which I've seen a lot of here in the Bay Area, with his inability to really make uh, a big game adjustments when they need to happen. Um, Kyle Shanahan, when he lost two of his key elements of the game, just completely fell apart as a call player. Go back and watch the game and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. As for the Philadelphia Eagles, you ran into that Zach Wilson buzzsaw, didn't you? Look, what Zach Wilson did was he didn't hurt his team and he didn't win the game. And basically what Zach Wilson did was he didn't do anything positive. He didn't do anything negative. And in my version of uh, of uh, of math, that basically turned into a very positive plus for the New York Jets. The Jets defense was also outstanding today. Uh, they finally um, found a way um, to shut down the um, Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, the Eagles didn't look uh, terribly good. I think things finally caught up with the offense, which, quite frankly, hasn't really looked all that good so far this season. Look, I'm not worried about the 49ers. I'm not worried about the Eagles. I'm sure both of those teams will be there um, towards the end of the season. Still, for the New York football Jets to actually be sitting here where they are today at three and three, which is probably a place that if you ask the Jets uh, uh, head coach, Robert Sala, and, and, you, and you said, look, I'm not going to report on this. This is just between you and me. Even with Aaron Rodgers as his starter, would you, with your offensive line problems, be uh, uh, and running game problems and the fact that you really only have one really good wide receiver who's under the age of 40 would you would you would you uh, accept a 3 and 3 record and i think sala completely off the record would have been very happy with that which is where the jets actually find themselves at today <clears throat> all right um so elsewhere around the national football league we're only going to cover a couple games tonight um, in addition to what we just covered. The um, <laughs> Chicago Bears and the Minnesota Vikings, as you all know, I'm a big Viking fan. And as you've probably heard me say a couple times this year, 
uh, the Vikings offense um, or and or defense has set football back at least 50 years. Uh, both the Bears and the Viking offenses today did it again. It was bad football. I'm just going to say it was really bad football on both sides of the fence. Uh, and when you're talking about two teams that, quite frankly, don't have fantastic defenses, which have defenses which are in and around the worst defenses in the National Football League, for both of the offenses to sputter as much as they sputtered was absolutely unacceptable for both of those teams. Vikes ended up winning, but it was the defense uh, actually picking up a fumble and a scoring a touchdown that put it over the top for the Vikes in that one. And then finally, um, the Sunday night football game. <clears throat> and, you know, coming into this game, Buffalo – a couple days ago was favored by 14. I don't know what the final line was, uh, but I'm sure it was 14 and or north of that. Buffalo at home against a horrible New York Giants football team. Let's just be fair. Let's just call it what it is uh, coming into this. And uh, Josh Allen looked absolutely sluggish throughout most of the football game. The uh, Buffalo Bills defense actually played really well. Um, they only allowed nine points, uh, though the Giants absolutely shot themselves in the foot at the end of the first half of the game. Still, the still the Buffalo Bills just looked terrible. It looked like they were still in London. I mean, geez, I mean, uh, you know, showing up on a Friday for a Sunday football game. I said it. I said it last week. I'll say it this week. When you're flying over to London is a bad idea. Just ask the Tennessee Titans who followed the same exact path that the Buffalo Bills did last week. They flew over on Friday for a Sunday game, whereas the Baltimore Ravens, who had lost badly in London before, switched it up and flew out on Monday. I'm just saying, when you get there matters if you're playing a game in Europe. As for this particular football game, the Buffalo Bills offense had a chance to just put this game away with about a minute and uh, 50 seconds to go, and they screwed up. They had a, 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 a third down and eight, and Josh Allen missed his tight end. And it's as simple as that. He missed a wide open tight end. This wasn't a difficult pass. This wasn't Josh Allen going crazy. This was a basic pass that Josh Allen failed to execute on. Like, how long has Josh Allen been in the league? Personally, Josh Allen's one of my favorite quarterbacks to watch when he's rolling. But when he's not rolling, it's just absolutely painful. And then they actually got lucky at the end of the game because they didn't call a pass interference um, at, uh, on a pass to Waller uh, as time was running out in the end zone. And I know the rules, and the rules basically say what, what happened was okay, but it wasn't. It was pass interference. That being said... The Giants are still one of the worst football teams. Talk about a football team playing down to the level of another football team, Buffalo. All right. That is it for uh, this evening's House of Takes pod. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Dave Dubois wishing you all a tremendous rest of your sports viewing week.